Hi everyone, Matt here from Proof Fly Fishing. Uh, this is the last video in our How to Build a Fiberglass Rod series. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit how about how to assemble your reel seat and then how to install it um, on your blank and get it perfectly aligned with the guides. Um, so first thing, um, there's two, two types of downlocking reel seats that I carry. So I'm going to go over both of them. Um, it's, if you're using a seat from somewhere else, um, generally speaking, all the components are going to be very similar. So you'll be able to figure those out based on these two. Um, so we have a couple parts. Um, I'll show some pictures in the lower corner here so you can get a close up. But we have a threaded barrel with a, um, a lock nut and then we have our insert in this case it's a wood insert so what we want to do you'll notice on um, our lock nuts that there's a piece of um, hard plastic that is going to help kind of get a real solid lock that's going to face the insert so when you're wondering which side to go on look for that plastic piece um, and then that's going to face the insert. So you'll slide the insert in just like that and then there's a little trim ring also called the cork check. Just looks like a washer and that's going to go on the opposite end of the threaded barrel. Um, it should only fit one way and all that's doing is adding a little decorative transition from the threaded barrel to the back of the grip. Um, it doesn't really have a, a, a big function. Maybe it keeps water out a little bit, but mostly decorative. Um, and as far as installing the reel seat, up to this point, that's all we need to do. We're not going to worry about the end cap yet or the sliding collar quite yet. So as far as epoxy goes, um, I like to put a small amount of epoxy on the actual insert. Um, and again, you don't need a tremendous amount here because the fit's pretty good and the majority of it's going to get pushed out when you install it. So um, apply a small amount right to the insert, slide it in, and it's always handy to have a piece of paper towel on hand just to clean the insert, clean the threads after that epoxy is put into place. Um, for the trim band or the cork check, I use just a couple drops of super glue on the threaded barrel and then I just put it in place and I'll just let it set for a couple minutes until that, that glue dries and then you're all set to install. Um, when it comes to the actual installation, we're going to fit our reel seed just like we fit our stint. Um, we're going to use a series of these tape dams. I'm just using a simple, a narrow um, half inch masking tape. And again, um, this is our other, this is our pocket reel seat. The only parts we need to worry about right now are the threaded barrel, the lock nut that's, that's on the threaded barrel, the trim band, and the insert. Once those are all glued up, we can go ahead and install our reel seat. And then we're going to talk about the other parts in just a minute. So the kind of fit you want is similar to the stint. Um, we're going to build those tape arbors up until we don't get any, we get a very small amount of wobble in that seat. We want it to be fairly tight. And what that's going to help do is align, it's going to center the reel seat on the grip. Um, that way it's not kind of sticking off to one side if you didn't have the stints quite tight enough, uh, or the stint quite tight enough. And um, once you're happy with the way it's located on there, we're going to go ahead and install um, the seat using epoxy. So we're going to put epoxy on the actual stint. Um, and because of the nature of these reel seats, it has a hollow area toward the front of that reel seat. It's okay to kind of put a little more epoxy toward the back of the stint. Because when we go to install, it's going to push a good amount of that epoxy forward into that open cavity, um, kind of sealing that off for us. Um, there's no need to put glue or epoxy on the actual cork. Um, if you try that, it's probably just going to leak out and show on the sides, which we can avoid, and it, it's not, you're not gaining any function by doing so. So go ahead and install, um, put your uh, you know, moderate to thin layer of epoxy on the stint, focusing primarily on the back. Install your reel seat. Make sure it's pushed all the way tight against the grip. We don't want any gaps between that trim band and the cork. Once you get that done and you're kind of holding it in place, 
If you have some space on the back of that insert where the stint is not filling it, um, it's okay and a good idea to just fill that with epoxy. So what we have then is the opening in the insert and then we fill that opening flush with the top of the insert with epoxy. And the reason we do that is because in a minute we're going to glue on our end cap and having that solid surface is going to give more area for the epoxy that's on this piece to rest on. Um, so we get a nice tight fit um, and there's no very little chance of that end cap popping off later on. So again once we have everything glued up we're gonna let this just kind of uh, set up fully you know give it you know if you're using a five minute epoxy give yourself ten minutes and that epoxy will be fully hardened and we're ready to um, work on alignment issues. When it's time to align the, um, the end cap, at this point the, the seat's pretty neutral. There's nothing to align. But there's two parts. One is the sliding collar. You want to make sure you install that first. So you'll slip that on. Make sure it's going the right direction so there's a pocket for the real seat. And what I like to do is just put a piece of tape over top of it. It keeps it out of the way. That way when you're installing, when you're aligning the end cap, you don't have to worry about um, that sliding cap moving all over the place. So just put a piece of tape over top of it and then it's out of your way. Now as far as um, getting the proper alignment for the end cap, there's a couple tricks. Um, and there's a lot of different techniques out there, but the one I use, and the one I find to be most accurate, is you'll sight down your blank. If you have a guide on it, if not a guide, then use your label or a hook keeper or whatever referencing spot you have on this lowering, lower section. And you want to sight that through. I sight it only to the grip. And once I have that in sight, I take a piece of our um, green guide tape and I lay it right over top of the grip in complete alignment with that guide. And because it's close to the, to the blank, it's closer than the real seat at least, um, it's easy to get a pretty straight alignment off it. And you can make small adjustments as you kind of sight that down. Um, again, we're using this kind of like a rifle scope. You're looking down, making sure everything is exactly how you want it to be. So now we have this reference on our grip that we can reference our end cap off. And it's just going to be a little bit easier than trying to see over the grip, down the blank. It just brings our reference point closer. Um, when you have your um, grip taped off, then grab your end cap. And what I do is, depending on the end cap, if you're using our pocket seat, and again, I'll show you a close-up of this, it has, it's not perfectly round. It has a, um, an opened up space for that real seat foot to go into. If you're using our Atlas seat, however, it's perfectly round on the outside and the inlet is um, only visible from the, the back side. So it's hard to see when it comes to aligning, um, aligning that. So what I like to do is take a piece of tape and center it on the inlet that the real foot sits in. And then I have a definitive center point on that end cap. And then I'll add epoxy. When you epoxy these, you don't need a tremendous amount, but you need it in the right places. So you'll want to put um, a thin layer of epoxy on the bottom inside of that cap, and then along roughly two-thirds of the inside of that cap staying away from the area that the real seat foot is going to go in. Once you have that epoxy in place, we're going to uh, bring our blank up and we have our, our guide strip here and we're going to slide it on and then we're going to align the two pieces of tape with each other. And because they're so close and because we have the nice color contrast, um, it's very easy to get a dead accurate um, uh, alignment when it comes to that end cap. Same thing if we're using an end cap, say in our Atlas seat, that is round and I can't see it when I'm aligning it unless I have the blank the other way. What I'll do is just find the center of that inlet where the real seat's going to go 
put my tape on it, hold my blank up, and I've got my nice green reference there, and I can align this one just as easy. And now, with a little adjustment, it's dead on. And then it's a good idea also because you got epoxy, and this is because this is a really important piece, just to kind of hold everything in place for a minute or two until that epoxy starts to set up a little bit, and then you should be all set. Um, after that, you know, give your uh, give your rod a good 24 hours to fully dry and cure, and you can take it out and fish it the next day. That's really all there is. Um, you know, we. It, Feel free to review some of the other videos if you have questions about finishing. If you noticed a, a blemish, um, check out our finishing video and it'll kind of walk you through um, how to touch up a guide if it needs it. But that's it as far as building a rod. Um, check out our other videos. We're going to do some more specialized videos on uh, making rattan grips. We'll do some on trim bands, on using silk. Um, we also have a new series coming out on uh, building a, a graphite rod. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, again, feel free to email us here or uh, give us a call or send us a text. Thank you.